This is episode 312 of The Amy Ehlers Show. I'm your host, Amy Ehlers, master coach, keynote speaker, and best-selling author. And this show is especially for powerful, high-achieving women that are ready to stop being so hard on themselves so they can make their greatest contribution. Show notes for today's episode can be found at amyehlersshow.com forward slash 312. You are going to love this interview I did with the fabulous Carrie, who used to wake up in the morning asking, how did I let myself get here? She wondered if she'd ever have the opportunity to shine again. Being a working mom can be so tough, and oftentimes we end up making decisions that we think are for our kids that ultimately lead to us not living to up to our fullest potential. So you're going to hear how Carrie knocked that off, stepped up, started rising and leading. You're going to love this. But before we go on to the show, I want to make sure, have you listened to my new masterclass? Oh my goodness, you got to hear it. I've been getting incredible feedback on this free masterclass webinar workshop. You can check it out at amyaylorshow.com forward slash masterclass. It's called Secrets the Good Old Boys Club Won't Tell Us. <laughs> Five revolutionary shifts women leaders must make now, and it is creating quite a splash. So make sure to check it out at amyaylorshow.com forward slash masterclass. And with that, it's on to the show. Hello, 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 and welcome everyone. It's Amy Ehlers here, the creator of The Rise and Lead Women's Life and Leadership Incubator, and I'm so excited to be joined here by the amazing Carrie, one of the almost graduates of Rise and Lead. She still has one more week left, but I was on our last group coaching call. The entire group was in tears, including Carrie and including me, because we were just so excited and inspired by the incredible journey that Carrie has been on here in Rise and Lead. And so I cannot wait to have her share a little bit about this journey. So welcome, Mm -hmm. Carrie. Thank you. Happy to be here. Yay. Okay, so let's dive in here. I'd love for you to share a bit about where you were when you started the application process for Rise and Lead. Paint a picture of what your life was like. Okay. Um, So if you remember, I saw you speak when you came to Willpower, um, the women's group that I'm a part of. And um, I was in a really, I think it was around May. I was in a really, um, I think dark place is a correct way to to paint a picture. Um, Just feeling really lost in my career and actually just in my place in this world. And um, in my career in that I had felt that I had let myself um, stay in a stagnant place for too long. Yes. Um, and in other parts of my life, because I had really put a lot on hold um, because being a mom was my one and only priority. Yeah. Um, so no regrets about that. Um, but having said that being where I am now, maybe I could have balanced it a little bit better, um, (laughs) along, along the way. Um, so that when you came and spoke, um, I was really, really looking for something that was going to help me, uh, pave my path. Because what I did know about myself is even as a dark of a place I was in with my career, I knew that there was something inside me that wasn't going to give up and that I needed to propel forward. I love that. I love, and I remember very clearly meeting you at that specific event. You came up to me afterwards and we chatted for a few minutes and I was like, have a breakthrough call. Let's get on a call. Let's just have a conversation, a one-on-one private conversation and just talk about what's going on. And I remember our call really well too, because for me, when I talk to women about Rise and Lead and when I do these breakthrough calls and just look at, okay, where is this woman? What's going on in her life? And can I really serve her? Mm -hmm. And I remember feeling so clearly, I'm like, Carrie, I know I can help you. This program was built for you. You're the woman I built Rise and Lead for. I remember you being like, yeah, I really, I really feel that. And it was interesting. We were reading, I was reading over your application and I was reflecting that back to you before we started recording and going live here. And one of the things that you said is you were really wondering if you were going to have an opportunity to shine again. And Mm -hmm. we're waking up in the mornings questioning, 
you know, how did I let it go this far? How did I let it go here? So tell us a little bit about that feeling. Um, so as I've shared with you that, um, I had the opportunity to work from home a hundred percent of the time when my boys were little and it afforded me the flexibility to be in the classroom, to be the PTA president, to walk them to school, to pick them up. And it, it, afforded me the luxury of doing all of those things, which were the most important things to me without having to give up my career. Yeah. Um, so that worked well for quite some time. Yeah. And then what ended up happening was, um, the company that I was with at the time started to not do so well. And so where I felt that I let myself get off track is I was too scared to make a decision to change my circumstances. Um, I was scared to go outside of the home. I was scared to not be there for my boys. I was scared to um, just not be the mom that I always wanted to be. And so when I met you, that's where I was at in this place of feeling like I had stayed in a place of fear And because of those decisions, I ended up letting down my family um, because I chose not to move on in probably the timing that I should have. It's so interesting because your commitment, and I'm, I'm a mom, as you know, of two daughters myself. And sometimes for us as working moms, it's like our commitment to our kids has us make one decision and then it ends up being sometimes those decisions where we start playing smaller that ultimately end up having us not be able to be the mom that we want to be. You're such a passionate, energetic, bright light. And suddenly all of these decisions that you made were under the guise of, oh, I'm putting my kids first, or I'm going to do this, then suddenly made it so that you didn't get to show up the way that you wanted to show up. Yep. Exactly. Fascinating in that way. Okay. So, so then you joined Rise and Lead. So tell Mm -hmm. us a bit about what you've been learning in the Rise and Lead Women's Incubator and what's really, what are the standout things that you really feel like have made a difference for you? Um, Sure. So actually to go back to even one of the first time I met you when you came to Willpower, I think one of, there were several things that stood out to me and drew me to you and your program. And one was one of the exercises you had us do in the room that day um, where we got into small groups. And here I'm surrounded by these just amazing women and listening to some of them tell their stories about how they had doubted themselves and how they had questioned their decisions and where they were at in their careers. And it was really that moment that was a pivotal moment for me because What it showed me was I wasn't alone. Right. That there were these amazing, all these amazing women that felt the same way. And that if they felt this way too, then there wasn't something wrong with me. Right. Um, So it was a sense of community. Yes. I, I, I love that you're pointing this out. And this is something that I do when I deliver keynotes, like one of the ones that you saw. And also in my webinars, I, I just always try to do everything that I can to remind women that they're not alone, that this chronic self-doubt, this mm-hmm. confidence gap, as it's called, exists in all women. Yeah. And even though things on the exterior might look one way on the interior, most women have that self-doubt. They have the imposter. They have the fraud. They have that secret thought of something's wrong with me. When yep. the reality is it's, it's a common human experience and especially mm-hmm. for women. So yep. I love that that light bulb went off in your mind of like, oh, wait, maybe, maybe I'm not broken. Maybe I'm not flawed, but maybe <laughs> that this is something that a lot of women experience, which is absolutely true. Yes. So I remember after we had our first discussion, um, I wanted to, it just seemed like such a good fit, like a piece of a puzzle being the last piece to complete the puzzle um, for me. And so I remember talking to, and I have to bring this up because I think it's important. I remember talking to my husband about it. And I remember I said to you, um, this all sounds great, but because of the commitment, I I definitely feel strongly that I need to, to check in with my husband about this. And I was, I had thought about it and I prepared this whole speech and I probably didn't have to even say more than three words. And he was like, if this is going to make you happy, then 
you don't even have to go any further. Like I support this a hundred percent. Like we don't even need to talk Yay. about it any further. Yay. Supportive husband, <laughs> <laughs> which is, which is so amazing. And yes. I think, and for some women listening right now, whether you have a husband, you have a wife, you have a partner, you know, whatever that situation is, it can be hard sometimes yep. to get the people that are closest to you on board and it's so important to enroll them as well in that yeah. you're going to be making this change. You're going to be, you know, investing the time, the energy, and the money to really step forward in a big way and up-level your life. Yeah. Yeah. And so you so, went for it, which... Yes, I went for it. Yes. Um, and, oh, sorry. Someone's calling on my house phone. Sorry. No worries. No worries. Uh, <laughs> We're live. It's okay. <laughs> um, so... I went for it and um, I remember being super excited to start the process and knowing in my heart that this was the right decision yes. and that this was the right path for me. Yeah. And I remember um, kicking it off and, and starting those, those first couple of modules. And I, what I really remember from the beginning is um, again, just being really broken and having to dig deep like deeper than I had dug in a long time. And I think what was um, so enlightening about the process is as I was digging deep, and I just want to preface it by saying that it, I think it's important to do that if you're going to do a program like this so that you can get the most out of it and everything that you're supposed to get out of it is really kind of dive in and take a look at different things and examine them and, and understand them. Um, and, and that is really what I committed to doing. And so when I did that, it was tough. I mean, there, I remember doing the first couple of modules and some of the exercises, um, in particular, you know, having your mean girl rant yes. and really taking that to heart and just being exhausted after the exercise was over because <laughs> I had sobbed so hard. Yeah. Um, but knowing it was necessary. Yes. Yeah, that's right. And it, it is, it's about this rise and lead is for women that are committed. They're committed to yeah. up-leveling. They're committed to creating a new experience in their life, both in their work life and in their home life. And, yeah. and I know for you, one of the reasons that we were all in tears on our last group coaching call was because share a little bit about the results that you've been getting. And I think uh, the, here's one of the reasons why I really wanted to come in and interview you in particular, Carrie, is because what I loved is I loved watching you make all of these inner shifts and really releasing the attachment to the external outcomes yeah. and then landing the external outcome too, yeah. which is how it always works. Yes. So talk yes. a little bit about that inner world that shifted and then the external world that shifted oh, for you. Okay. Yeah. So in terms of my inner world shift, I think that it came from a few different things. Mm. It came from the hard work that I was putting in, in my commitment to the program. Yes. It came from my one-on-one -on -one coaching with you when we would go over specific exercises or tactics or actions that I was then going to take on. Yes. And then I have to say the big thing for me, um, as you know about me is this sense of community. And so on our Thursday group calls, I felt like that is where I really, those three things in combination, but in particular, the group calls on Thursdays, yeah. where is where I started to see a shift because I had come together with this small group of women that I just felt a connectedness to, even though it's not like we have been friends for years. Right. Um, but we had this connectiveness that, and it was sacred. That's really the way that I describe it. It was this sacred time for us um, where you just trusted these people and the process. And so I felt enlightened. I felt lighter. Um, and, and then it, the, doing the work on the modules became something I looked forward to and was excited about. Awesome. And so I felt that shift internally because it went from this really, pl this place of feeling sad to this place of feeling excited mm -hmm. and, and not, not dreading what steps were, but being excited about the opportunities and the possibilities. So those were the internal shifts that I started to see within myself. Yes. Yes. And so, and I know that for me watching and witnessing you, and this is why I love my job is because it's so amazing to see someone that has really forgotten who she is and has lost touch with that part yeah. of her that is 
is the truth of who she is to re engaging with that truth Mm -hmm. and then letting that part of you come out and shine so brightly. And so then I know that one of your external resorts, those, those goals that you had was really about finding that new career or finding that new position that was going to light you up. Yes. And so tell us about what has happened. So as of last week, I have a new position that I am so excited to be starting. I just feel like it's a, a next step in my career. It's what I've been looking for. It is what I've been working for. Yes. And so I really feel like all of, to your point, all the hard work that I put in on the inside, um, it, I feel like it spilled over into all aspects of my life. It, the, the goal was I always, I wanted something new in my career, but I feel like it's made me a better mom. I feel like it's made me a better wife. Um, and I feel like when I went into the interview um, for this particular uh, next uh, position, I just walked in there and had a complete mindset change in that I, I was like, I will be myself. I bring value. And if this is a good match, it will work out. And if it's supposed to be, it will be. But if it doesn't, then I know because of who I am that there will be other opportunities down the road. I love that. Your confidence before you went into that interview process, which, you know, when our inner mean girl, that which is what I like to call the inner critic, for those of you that aren't as familiar with my work, it's like that inner mean girl voice can come in and have a field day with us before we do yeah. something like go on a job interview. And your interview yeah. process was intense. It was not yes. an easy interview process that you walked into. No. And so we were able to really look at, okay, what's the inner mean girl saying about this process? And then what is your inner wisdom? What does that voice of truth know about okay. this? And you walked in with such confidence. And of course you landed the job, which is so exciting. And I'm just, I'm so thrilled for you. I'm happy for your family. I'm happy for your new coworkers that are going to get to see confident Uh Carrie walk into the room and be the light that you are. Mm -hmm. And I'm just, and I'm so excited, of course, for you as well. Thank you. As a celebration. So one final question for you, if there's a woman that's watching right now, that's maybe in that darker place, that woman Mm -hmm. that's lost touch with her confidence, that feels like she's bored, that she's not you know, that maybe her time has passed and she's just not mm-hmm. going to ha- get to have that life that she's always dreamed of. Mm-hmm. What would you want to tell her about the potential of joining Rise and Lead? Um, I would want to tell somebody first and foremost to never give up on themselves. Yes. And that this is the perfect program to help them find themselves again. So first, don't give up on yourself. And second, find people and tools that will help you find yourself um, because it's never too late. Um, I think that there are always, um, ways for us to reinvent ourselves and choose the path that we want to be on. And sometimes we need help doing that. And now I feel like I have this wonderful community and I take so many great things away from it. And I don't feel like it's the end for me. Um, I feel like these will be things that I will implement in all areas of my life, um, for a long time to come. Yes. Beautiful. So if you're watching and you're curious and you're like, oh, I, I really want to have this kind of experience, just want to encourage you to apply for a breakthrough call with me and we'll see if we might be the right fit, if I can be of service to you. I'd love to hop on a private call with you, hear about what's going on, hear about the situation that's having like the challenges that are going on in your life and then what that vision is and where you want to get to. And if I feel like I can be of service We'll talk about how I work with women. And if not, that's okay too. You can go to wakeupcallcoach.com forward slash rise. That's wakeupcallcoach.com forward slash rise. Apply for a one-on-one call with me. And we I feel like I might be of service. We'll hop on a call. So with that, thank you so much, Carrie, for sharing thank your story. You. I so appreciate it. And until next time, it's Amy Ehlers signing off, reminding you to keep rising and keep leading. Bye-bye. Bye. <laughs>